thanks for clicking on the video. I'm in the woods at the bushcraft camp. I've got my dog, I've got a few tools with me, an axe, a knife, and a saw. I've also got a big fish. So we're gonna be cooking up a fish today, and to go with it, we're gonna forage for a few, a few wild edibles that are in season right now. I'm also gonna to talk to you about how I lit this fire. You can probably hear the crackling of the fire, and spoiler alert, yes, I did rub two sticks together. And what I'm looking for is a certain type of tree, a certain species. There's lots of species of trees which we all know, however, not many of them can be used for cooking. Some of them are poisonous, some aren't poisonous. Some of the ones that aren't poisonous will leave a very bitter taste in your mouth. So, I'm looking for a certain type of tree and it's called a hazel tree. And if you didn't already know, hazel is a great tree when it comes to cooking food over the fire or even things like shelter building and fire lighting. So we've got a young hazel tree, well a young shoot right here, growing out of an older tree. And the great thing about hazel is, you can come back every year and take two, three, maybe four of these upright shoots and it's not gonna damage the tree. Hazel loves it when you coppice it because it encourages other shoots to grow and that's just more material for next year. So this one, well, watch this. See, that is dry. We don't want that. Whereas this one has got green shoots on it. Straight away I can see it's green on the inside and that is perfect, that's exactly what we want because now we know we can use this for cooking over the fire. It's got moisture in it already, it's a non-toxic wood, there's no bitter taste which means we've got some good cooking time before the wood dries out and burns. And this is another example of a hazel tree, you can see it's got these lovely upright straight shoots. Again great for shelter building, great for fire lighting, great for cooking. So I've already got one which is about as thick as my, my finger. I need. I need that one because, well, you'll see shortly, but I now need a slightly thicker one, about as thick as maybe two fingers or a thumb. So we're back at camp. This is my, well, the thinner stick, which is about as thick as a finger. And the thicker one, as I said, it's about as thick as a, if you have fat thumbs like me, it's about as thick as a fat, as thick as a, <laughs> as thick as a fat thumb. Try saying that really fast. Right. So I need to just get rid of the bark on this. I need to turn this into splints. So I need to kind of chop this maybe about down to there, roughly. <laughs> So now that I've taken the bark off, what I'm trying to do is just make this thinner because I don't want a round peg, I want it to be a flat peg with a bit of a point at the end so I can pierce through the fish and then secure it onto our upright. And now that we've got it nice and flat, I'm just going to put a point on the end, one there, and I'll just do one on this end as well. I want to do exactly the same to this one. So we've got our two skewers or splints, they're made. Now let's move on to this, the bigger one. Again, I'm just going to tidy it up by getting rid of all of these little shoots or branches that are growing out of it. And then I'm going to be splitting down with my knife about a third of the way. And the reason for the point on the opposite end of the split is because we're gonna thread our fish on and then we're gonna bang this or hammer it into the ground so it stays there leaning towards the fire with our fish nicely slotted down, smoking away in that cedar smoke. Oh. And then we're gonna go foraging. Knife plug, bushcraft tools, knife, uh, English made, amazing quality, 
more information on the Bushcraft Tools website. So now it's time to prepare the fish and to keep it as hygienic as possible, I'm gonna keep it on the plastic packaging that it came in. I know it doesn't look very good having plastic in a bushcrafty video. So I've just, I've sliced it into it just behind its head a little bit, just until I almost reach that backbone. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to do the rest of the work. I think you can get a cleaner, a much cleaner bone using your fingers than you can using a knife. You'll see what I mean shortly. So I've done the bottom bit. You can see these bones have all been lifted. I'm gonna do exactly the same to the top. And I just go in and I feel for the bone and I just put my finger behind the bone and it just lifts the bone from the meat. It's a great way to, um, well, to debone a fish. You can do this with salmon, you can do it with mackerel, you can even do it with trout. You can do it with lots of different fish. So I've been working this for the last 30 seconds and just running my fingers down along. And you can see I've managed to separate the spine or the backbone from the fish, well, from the meat itself. And this we don't want, you know, this is exactly what we want because this smoked for the next 45 to one and a half, you know, 45 minutes to one and a half hours. This is going to be absolutely beautiful. And as I said, we're going to go foraging shortly to make a nice little dip to go with this. And there we have it. Classic fish skeleton car cartoon, you know, almost cartoon style. Yes, we could just throw this away, but I'm going to keep this. I'm going to take it home, put it in the freezer because a lot of you watching have already seen my previous videos where I've been down the coast. I like, I like a bit of catch and cook. You know, I like to, I like to go down camping. I take bait with me. I take a pot. I catch prawns, lobsters and crabs. So why throw this when I can take it home, put it in the freezer, take it out to the beach one day and catch a crab to show you guys. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull out a few more of these bones because you know, you don't always get every single bone out of the fish when you're trying to when you're trying to remove the, the the backbone. And just to show you, look at this. This is just meat. This is a good kilo or kilo and a half of meat. Amazing, amazing. I'm so looking forward to eating this. Right, so we've got those skewers that I made. I'll bring them back here and we'll get back to it. So I've got my sticks that I made earlier, and these are actually going to go in here. So which one's the longest? In fact, I'll probably put that one there because it's slightly, well, they're roughly the same anyway. So I'm gonna make a, a small hole about right there. And then I'm gonna make a small hole on the opposite side right there. So that's the top skewer or stick. And I'm gonna do the same thing down there. And the thing about these is it just, it just, you know, these stakes or these skewers, they just help to hold the, the fish open into that wall of smoke coming towards it. And the great thing about smoking fish is that in a survival situation, it's a great way of preserving food. When you smoke it, it dehydrates it, it dries it out, removes the moisture, it puts smoke on it, insects and flies maggots don't like to to live or breed um, or land on smoked food so it's a great way it's been done for thousands and thousands of years and we just want to make sure there's a little bit at the top so that we can close it and secure it i don't want to use a bit of paracord or a shoelace i want to use a bit of nature's resource and that's exactly what bushcraft is it's being able to identify nature and see it as resources rather than leaves trees and bark you see food fire shelter and water things like that. In the past, I've used cord nature's cordage to make things like this. This is my primitive caveman style crayfish trap. I made this out of honeysuckle. Honeysuckle makes a great cordage, but I, I'm not gonna use honeysuckle today. I've actually got something that a friend gave to me a few years ago. I've never featured it in a video. I've never really used it properly. I have made a few um, bracelets out of it. It's called rattan. Right, let me go and get it. This is it, it's a vine that grows in the jungle. This is from Southeast Asia. So it's obviously all wrapped up, but it grows, it can go on for almost hundreds and hundreds of meters. The end of the vine is actually edible, but we'll leave that for another day. How am I gonna use this? If you look here, I'm just gonna peel off 
a bit of this, of this bark. Well, it's not really bark, it's fibers. The great thing about rattan is it's made up of really long fibers and they're super, super strong. So I can wrap this as many times as I want, pull it really tight, tie several knots in it, and it won't snap. Rattan is great, but you could use a root from a cedar or a pine tree, or you could use some of the honeysuckle. You know, there's loads of different things I've used on the channel when it comes to cordage, but today I think I want to use a bit of rattan. For those people that have been to Southeast Asia, you might have seen these, you know, shacks people make, and they use nature's cordage, and it's rattan. Rattan is such a great material, they use it for cooking as well, just like we're doing over here. So I've done it four or five, maybe six wraps, and now it wants to spring back. So to secure it, I'm just gonna ease off, holding it there with my finger, pull that through. And honestly, you don't need many of these. You just need the one, pull it a bit tight like that. And there we have it, nice and secure. One salmon, no head, no tail, no bone, on a hazel stick, eco-friendly, great material resource to cook with, as I mentioned earlier. I have put a point on the end, it's now time to get this into the ground, downwind of the smoke, put some flavour into it, get it cooked, cured, and hopefully eat it later on with some nice forage dip. So the fish is smoking away, it's being cooked. I'm leaving the camp, I'm going back towards where I found that hazel earlier, because I want to do a bit of foraging and, well, I'll tell you when I get there. So the salmon's going to taste great, even just on its own, but we're adding flavour to it by using that cedar smoked wood. To add even more flavour, I've come down here to a patch of wild garlic that I come to every single year. You can see these leaves are fully grown, it won't be long before the flower, oh, and here we are, before these flower heads start to appear. These are actually really good. I quite often use these, I dry them in a dehydrator and I make salt and it lasts for three, four, five years and it stays really strong, well, has a really strong flavor and uh, aroma of garlic, which is great for a steak or a salad, anything like that. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna be picking a little extra flavor for my dish. So I don't know, I don't need too many because these are quite strong and they're quite potent, these ramsons. They're called ramsons, but we often know them as wild garlic. You can see I don't want that one because a bird's done a little, little on that one. So we'll swap it over and there we are. We've got four, four, five, maybe five leaves right there. All right, back to camp. And wild garlic is that one plant that everyone knows. We've all come across it. We've all seen it in, in, in fields, uh, in parks. You often smell it before you see it. Oh, a deer. Look, there's a deer. Can you see it? There's a deer right there. And there's Abba, 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 Abba. She hasn't even seen it. Anyway, I was gonna say that the wild garlic, I've actually made a lot of wild garlic butter as well and frozen it in ice cube trays. And you just pop that out into like pasta or a bowl of mussels. It's a great way to preserve a foraged plant which is full, I mean full of flavour. And speaking of another wild plant, here we are. This is a primrose. So these beautiful flowers you can eat. And to be honest with you, they look better than they taste because they haven't really got much flavour. A very delicate floral flavour. They're a great garnish. Yeah, they're actually quite nice. Not my go-to plant. I think Amber's found the deer, she's barking at it. Yeah, they're not my go-to, but they're an easy picking, an easy find. Not very filling though, you need, to, you need to eat quite a lot of these. Anyway, we'll come back later on once the fish is cooked, because we're gonna be needing a few of these. And although I did just show you the primrose flowers that I was just eating, there's one more plant I need to forage. Let's go. And that plant I'm talking about has also got the name garlic, or the word garlic in its name. But I find it's more of a chive flavor. I used to call it wild chive until I really knew what it was called. 
but it's more of an oniony, chivey flavour than a garlicky flavour. There's some there, and there's, and there's loads more here as well. Remember I said the word it looks like, well, remember I said it looks like chives? Well, that's exactly what it looks like. Chives. This stuff right there. It smells just like oniony chives. Here comes amber. I love it, I love this stuff. This with potatoes, this finely chopped with mashed potatoes would just be amazing. Right, let's get a load of this, get back to camp, chop it up, and we're gonna make a dip. Don't take too much, that's all I need. I haven't taken the whole bush. There's loads of other bushes here. Remember the crayfish trap I showed you earlier? Well, I use that trap in here because there's so many crayfish. So I'm back at camp, I've got my chive, I'm gonna just fold that in half, I'm gonna get my wild garlic and just fold that in half as well. And then I just need to try and finely chop it as fine as possible. You know what, I probably don't need all of it. I probably just, that's all I need really. And I'm gonna move that into this pot. So I'll take some mayonnaise, I'm gonna get a few dollops of mayonnaise into this. Throw this into my mayo and then give it a good little mix. And already I can smell this garlicky, chivey, oniony, mayo-y goodness. And that's gonna be great with our smoked salmon. There is our wild garlic and wild, well, crow garlic, more like chives and mayo dip. So I mentioned earlier how I lit the fire by rubbing sticks together, kind of like the caveman primitive way. And there's only a certain few sticks in, the, in this country, especially, that you can use. But to find out exactly how, or for a more in-depth video in bow drilling and creating a fire from rubbing sticks together, please make sure you stay tuned to the channel, make sure you subscribe because I've got a video coming out very soon showing you exactly how to light a fire by rubbing sticks together. Right, so I've got to put my gloves on for this because it's really, really hot, as you can imagine. And also the, the oils from the fish, they run down on the inside of the stick and it just adds to the heat. Way too hot. And just look at that. Woo! Unreal. I'll just get rid of this stick on the top and then try and shift it up a bit and hopefully, there we are. Wow! Look at the colour, smokiness, oh, little little bit of stick. Oh, then that's a bone, bone there. There's a few little bits of charcoal because they spit up from the fire sometimes. Right, time for the dip. And here we have it. So it's taken about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes to cook, slowly cook. And we've made our dip, we've got our flowers. Where do we start? Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot, it's hot. We've got a flower, primrose flower, wild garlic dip. Mm, wow. And it's, oh, look at it. Beautiful. Bit of that dip, another flower. Oh yeah, I know what you want. This is incredible. If you like smoked salmon, then trust me, you want to try doing this next time you're out camping with family or friends, or even if you're out fishing and you're, and you're able to light a fire and cook the trout or salmon that you can catch. Give it a try. It's incredible. The smokiness, 
they're so good and also it really helps to have a bit of mayonnaise and a bit of wild garlic because it just adds to the flavor but even without that it would have been beautiful on its own mm. I'll give amber a little bit without any garlic or mayo there you are good oh look at that bit a little bit crispy as well oh And that is it for this video. Thank you very much if you're still watching. It was just a quick video to show you how I like to cook fish when I'm in the woods and what woods I like to use when it comes to smoking. If you've, if you've tried this before or if you're into smoking meat, um, which I think a lot of people are these days, they have big, these are big American smokers, what do you use? What is your favorite wood that you like to flavor your meat with? So on that note, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Goodbye.